Hey, good afternoon, traders. Good afternoon. My name is Raul Rivera. I'm the founder of the marketprofile.com. Today is Solar Eclipse Monday, August 21st, 2017. Let's start it with uh, today's special video. And, you know, today was uh, another rough day of trading, uh, specifically for me. Um, you know, it seems as though I, I'm, I'm running into a, a rough patch in my trading. Um, you know, with the changing dynamics in the market, I'm, I'm starting to get uh, caught a little bit off guard on some of uh, some of the contracts that I've always relied to in the past when uh, things like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ or even the 30 year weren't really working out. And those markets are gold and crude oil. Uh, I'm going to show you guys my portfolio spreadsheet and I'm going to show you guys how much of a percentage of all of my profit really comes from gold and from crude oil those are my two best markets though crude oil is starting to uh you know shift a little bit on me here uh, you know super rally on friday today super sell-off you know i'm finding it a little bit hard to read uh, every now and again it's it's becoming a little bit more difficult i'm gonna have to switch up a couple of things and uh i'm gonna put a few strategies to work but for now let's focus on the market profile let's switch it over uh, to the S&P 500 futures here and the plan was simple uh, We were trying to short everything we could but unfortunately as you guys can see uh, You know the short side just never came through When we take a look here at the S&P uh, we were looking to short around 32 to 33 uh, to begin because at the beginning of the session it was an inside day which means Today's range is trading inside previous day's range. Um, when trading an inside day, we want to be long just below the um, the bottom of the day and just above the high of the day. We want to be short, and we want to do that at the single prints. And single prints, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. Uh, single prints are these loan TPOs, right? So two great examples here so here are uh, some TPOs so as you can see this, these right here these alone letter H's these are single prints right they're by themselves that's why we call them single prints uh, another name for them are selling tails uh, which are single prints at the highs and buying tails which are single prints at the lows it's pretty much the equivalent to a candlestick and somewhat of a wick at the bottom of a, uh, of a candlestick. So that's why they call them buying tails and selling tails, depending on what side of the candle they're on. In this case, on a, on a profile, right, on a standard deviation, on a bell-shaped curve, uh, we see them as single prints below and above value. And that's exactly where we want to uh, be buying and selling the market, especially on an inside day. I personally did not want to buy anything, but then again, you know, August and the volatility is just throwing my mind to overthink trades. This is something I should have taken and I did not. So getting long the S&P between 17 to 20, okay, 17 to 19 actually, 17 to 19 uh, was the buy zone, single prints below value. As you can see, it traded as low as about 1575 or 1550. Uh, before it rallied as high as 29. So this here could have provided the 10 points uh, I could have definitely used. And uh, again, just using the market profile, finding these areas to get long and get short. So I was looking to short 32 to 33. Of course, we can see price has never made it that far. And then based on value rather than a strategy on an inside day, based on value uh, I was still looking to short same as um, Friday looking to short 40 to 42 and again you know if we didn't make it to 32 to 33 we definitely didn't make it to 24 40 uh, but this area is still valid and I'm gonna be looking to short that tomorrow if the market can get there. there's certainly resistance there uh, we found that even within close proximity we had resistance thus the selling tail right there uh, so another day, uh, we'll try it again. So here in the S&P, I, I pretty much didn't do 
much trading now. Here's where I took uh, the majority of my loss. Uh, again, in crude oil. Crude oil has become really weird. Uh, you know, we're having these really large up days and then these really large down days almost on a, uh, you know, every other day, it seems like. Uh, here, on this day, this I believe this was Wednesday, uh, with the uh, inventory report, huge selling from the 20 lot traders. That's our first sign that things weren't looking good. Here again, huge selling and market traded much lower. Here we saw a lot of selling. Uh, of course, the market didn't do too much. It did trade as low as uh, around 47, uh, 40, which is uh, 47, 30, 47, 40, which is exactly where we made the low of the day. Absolutely no coincidence. Uh, excuse me, sorry. Let me take that back. It's pure coincidence that it happened this way, right? There's there's really no specific value uh, other than these profiles, which we really didn't think uh, the market had it in it to sell this this much. Um, would have been a, a decent area to get uh, long in, in this in these positions, but of course, uh, it happened much after the 2:30 p.m. close. And I, generally, if I'm not in a position already, I don't like to uh, trade past 2:30 p.m. The volume, the trading activity, really slows down, and it's really not worth uh, doing any sort of trading. So, uh, first trade here was three contracts between uh, 40 and 30, between 40 and 30. Uh, this trade was probably the best one. It worked for about 17 ticks, I believe. The high of the positive, uh, you know, equity curve was 17 ticks. Uh, was looking to trade back to the highs and get rid of the position there. We were in a inside day, and we still are, right? We still are, but on an inside day, want to buy just under the lows sell just above the highs so i bought just under the lows based on value uh and another value area in the past uh, good for 17 ticks but the market did quickly reverse after maybe like 20 minutes into the trade and uh added a few more here looking for a bit of upside uh kind of went against me and i took the trade off uh for 28 ticks on eight contracts comes out to about two thousand two hundred dollars <throat> so not not a very pretty trade here uh, in crude oil and crude oil is actually my biggest uh, out of all of my trades crude oil has always been the biggest profit uh, machine this year okay this year alone I'm, I'm up humongous on just crude oil since May, I believe the number is about $55,000. Probably is going to change today to $53,000. But um, huge, huge profits. I mean, the biggest profits I've made have come from crude oil. And something is fundamentally changing in crude oil. I haven't figured out just uh, what it is just yet. But uh, it's starting to reflect in my, in my trading. So I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful and uh, approach crude oil a bit differently uh, moving forward. So I don't give up way too much, right? I, I'm, I'm okay with giving some back to the market because I'm going to get it back later. But now it's, it's starting to, to snowball a little bit and I got to really be careful with what I'm doing. Um, next up, we got gold. And this is a great example. Okay, today my trading in gold is a fantastic example as to why we always got to have trades uh, placed. Okay, we can't just wait for the market uh, to get to a sell zone or a buy zone, we got to have orders sitting in place. Okay, uh, let's see. So I'm just going to split the profile here into a couple of sections. I want to see if, uh, if I can get B period all on its own. Yeah, so around there, um, we were trading around here, uh, you know, 1293. Okay, 1293 around 9 a.m. So A period is where this profile, this split profile begins. That's 9 a.m. Eastern time. Okay, 9 a.m. Eastern time. So around 9 a.m., you know, we come in. We're like, okay, well, we got a valley area here. We're going to start selling between uh, 1301 and 1299. 1301 
and uh, we're also going to be looking a short, uh, excuse me, short up here, 1299 to 1301, and also looking to get long uh, 1280 to 1282. Okay, and this already has happened to me twice in um, in a span of about a few days. Okay, in a span of, with, of about two, a few days. Uh, I believe on this day and uh, today, okay, if I didn't have my orders there, I probably would have missed it, right? I'm watching many charts. I'm watching S&P crude, NASDAQ, Dow, Euro, 30-year. I'm watching a lot of things all at once. I don't have eyes everywhere. But I do have orders everywhere now. And it's an extremely important part of today's trading to have an order out and wait for the market to come to that order, right? I always say, let the market come to you. Don't go directly to the market, okay? Here we let the market come to us and it was right there at B period. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna re-merge all of these profiles and I'm just gonna switch over um, to hybrid view. And when I switch over, we have this pretty big tail up here, right? On this specific bar right there, we have a pretty long tail. Now that happened very quickly, in fact, I wasn't even paying it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at myself. I'm like, okay, what the heck did I just get filled in? I'm looking everywhere. I didn't even realize it was gold. It happened that quickly. And that's why it's important to always have orders and knowing where to have orders in this case, um, at value. So, you know, I had about five, a uh, five contract trade to go short. Um, I only got filled on my first contract, which was only a one contract trade. And, uh, as you can see right off that level, very quickly, I think the most it generated was about four and a half points. That's about 45 ticks. Not too bad. I ended up uh, holding it for longer and uh, only getting about 2.1 points on the trade. And, um, you know, at least it generated something, right? Uh, I'm not taking all losing trades. At least I'm, I'm, I'm winning somewhere. Now I just got to capitalize on my wins rather than my losses. Cause it seems as though I have that reversed for now. So, you know, it's just sort of an internal battle now. You know, it seems, I know a lot of people are like, wow, Rose losing a lot lately. Um, but that's okay. You know, this is the hardest game in the world, trading in the financial markets. This is the absolute hardest game in the world. It's one of the hardest jobs. You know, it's not really for everybody. And, um, you know, you definitely got to have a, a good strategy uh, to make a living off of it. And you also have to have the means, right? So it's not really for everybody. Um, if you don't have the, the risk capital, you know, this isn't <clears throat> something that might necessarily, uh, you know, be for you, though. In order to understand how this, you know, how financial market work, you also got to understand that every strategy is always going to find a little bit of a slump, right? And I think I'm inside that slump. Um, so very quickly, I just, I do want to show my, um, <clears throat> my trade log here. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it, it's important to look at it because, um, you know, I didn't just start trading the other day and I'm, I'm down this much uh, year to day uh, before today. So today I'm down about $3,100. So this will probably go down to 63. But uh, since I started keeping track on this log here, I've, you know, I've been up about 60,000, uh, 66, $60,000. You can see here, you know, my p and uh, you could track it on a candlestick chart. And as you can see, you know, the profits have always been consistent. It just happens to be now that I've entered the month of August, you know, something weird is happening, some, some different shift. And, uh, you know, here's suddenly the curve, uh, you know, the, the down, uh, the drawdown in, in my P&L. You know, I, I was making a joke in the room uh, with the guys. And, you know, when we take a look at my p &L, it looks like I'm, I'm coming into support right <laughs> you got a, a little bit of value right there so I, I may be coming to support so you know something good might happen out of here you know maybe my trading will improve now and my PL will continue to go higher but you know all jokes aside um, you know I've only drawn 
drawn down just just a little bit here on my entire profit since May. So, you know, I'm not in panic mode just yet, and I shouldn't be because I've proven that for three months straight, I can make a, a really good uh, profit and a, and a good run using my system, the market profile. Now, of course, it's, you know, it has its little challenges every now and again, but ultimately, you know, it's not the sprint, it's the marathon. And I do believe, you know, the P&L will continue to increase. Uh, at some point <clears throat> but every single strategy no matter what whether it's a <clears throat> whether you're trading a MACD or, or, or you're trading uh, you know moving averages or something like that you're always gonna have days and maybe even weeks or months where the market is gonna play into that and you know you're always gonna be making some money on that strategy but then suddenly there's gonna be a time for of amount, you know, sometimes weeks and maybe, you know, if it's not really working out months where the strategy is going to fall into a slump. And that's that happens all of the time. Believe me, I was using uh, algorithmic trading and you would think, oh, you know, you, you set up an algorithm, it trades for you. And, you know, that'll be the answer to all of your questions, to all of your 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 prayers, right? That'll be the um, the answer. But what I've really come to find out is that algorithmic trading is just as much work as um, discretionary trading. And the reason for that is that you're always constantly fixing your strategy, especially when you're algorithmically trading. And that takes a lot of time, takes up a lot of work, and you know I've been known to beat my own algorithms trading the market profile so I'm gonna continue to trade my my profile uh, indicator and you know I only bring algorithmic trading up because that's something I, I've just noticed over time you know you have a great strategy it works and then it falls into like this funk and then it works again and then falls into a funk um, it's just the way everything is uh, you know not even Goldman Sachs or the Nasdaq or JP Morgan, you know, they don't have the right strategy either, right? Sometimes they, they have fantastic trades and then sometimes they have a little bit of a slump. So it, it's almost like a phenomena in the markets. <clears throat> uh, and I'm sure it's happened to a lot of traders, uh, many of you as well. Uh, looking at the 30 year bond, very boring today, inside day, uh, so we can see here, trading inside uh, the previous day's profile. Didn't even make it to the high, didn't even make it to the low. Uh, I had one order down here because we had value and uh, I decided you know, to cancel it because the market just wasn't moving anywhere. We can see uh, we had the larger portion of distribution just above the open. So there's a P-shaped distribution in here somewhere. All you gotta do is split it. Anyways, uh, next up we got Dow and the NASDAQ and with the Dow, the Dow was the only market that wasn't trading inside, right? It did trade outside just prior to um, me coming in around 8 in the morning, checking out the markets and the profiles. Here in the NASDAQ, um, we were in an inside day, and I highlighted the area to, to be buying in green. Uh, and again, you know, I didn't want to be buying just below um, the lows of the day because volatility has increased and that favors the short sellers right when volatility increases it also increases the the amount of selling that comes into the market so if we're at you know distribution lows over the past let's say 20 trading sessions we're at the very lows that we've been on all month then you know i don't really want to be buying at the absolute lows because there's always going to be a higher probability that we do trade just a little bit lower, just a little bit lower. That's why I didn't take the trade in the S&P to the long side, even though it worked, I didn't take the trade. Here in the NASDAQ, it didn't work until it finally worked. So this one suffered a bit of a drawdown before coming up, and, but, but so did the S&P, but maybe not as much of a drawdown. Uh, so really just not looking to buy the market right now, I'm only looking to sell it simply because there's more levels of resistance than there is support in the short term. Um, so here in the, SM, uh, in the NASDAQ, no trade taken whatsoever. 
Uh, the Dow, same thing. We were looking to short, uh, let's see, I think 60 to 30. Uh, of course, you know, the market did not trade that high. Same thing here with the NASDAQ. Just above the highs, we were looking to short. And then up here, 50 to 45 short. And obviously, the market had nowhere near close to that level. Um, we had no news either, no economic activity, just a solar eclipse. That's about it. That's all the market had to trade on, uh, which really uh, wasn't too much. And then uh, the next market I want to take a look at here, just the currencies. And then uh, that'll be it for our video here. Hang on, let me make sure I switch over to the currencies. And this one was the other trade that sort of just, um, you know, took me from, <clears throat> you know, achieving a profitable day today here in the euro. So, uh, you know, taking a look at this market, we had an inside day also. So if I just split those profiles, we can see that early this morning, we had a somewhat of a D-shaped distribution here. We weren't really doing anything. And that D-shape is an inside day now. This strategy isn't going to work every time. No strategy, <clears throat> no strategy is going to work every single time. Sometimes it's going to be a loser. Today, the inside day strategy was a bit of a loser. Though it was good for about, I think, eight ticks at its best, which isn't really that much. Uh, eight ticks at its best, and then just reverse from there. Uh, we had value here, so I figured, you know, we're just above the high of the day. We're at value. Let me try to short it. Uh, and sometimes you just can't short the market, right? And these currencies, when they decide to trend, they will trend all day long. Here with the euro. Um, you know, I was short here, then I added to my position up here. And uh, as you can see, just above that short area is where we decided to consolidate and distribute for the rest of the day. So pretty tough uh, trading here. So on about four contracts, I took a, a 38 tick uh, loss on this one. So that, that came out to about $800 uh, when it was all said and done. So, you know, pretty rough day. I got to find a different way to just uh, manage some of these trades. Um, but with the currency trade, like I said, you know, it's, it's just one of those where when it really decides to trend, it just continues and continues and continues. And, uh, you know, I just got caught on one of those days. Uh, most days, as we can see, this day, this day, this day, and uh, maybe not so much this day, but a little bit this day. So this one half so we got one two three and a half days straight where we just remained inside of a range and distributed up and down meanwhile you know today I just happened to get caught with that one time uh, that the market decides to trend and one of the things I, I, I keep saying it's a true statistic 80% of the time we create a range okay in trading and then the other 20% of the time we trend <clears throat> and this 20% caught me here in uh, in the euro and also caught me in um, in the crude oil market so anyways guys uh, I'd like to invite you guys to the trading room on a 14-day free trial where you can watch me uh, analyze all of these markets and uh, trade them live and manage them live real time. Um, so come by the website www.themarketprofile.com and uh, claim your free trial. Also, if you like the video, make sure you guys click like and uh, leave me a comment uh, if you guys have any questions or uh, you know you have something to say about the video. Uh, make sure you guys interact and uh, give me a comment and I will we'll definitely personally uh, reply back as soon as I can. Other than that, guys, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, another rough one, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, just have to sharpen up on a, a few different skills and, uh, and you know, attempt to trade the market um, in between value areas uh, using a, a different strategy. And tomorrow I'm going to be uh, doing just that. All righty, guys, thanks for watching. I hope everybody has a great day. Uh, I hope everybody got to see a little bit of the eclipse. Uh, where I'm at, it wasn't a full-blown eclipse. 
It's a little bit, but you know, enjoyable to watch either way uh, up in the sky. Uh, other than that, I hope everybody has a great night. Um, those of you who are Forex traders, good luck uh, tonight. And uh, hey, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, guys.